Okay, well, welcome back to Grandad's Kitchen. Uh, we're here again in my kitchen in Wangaroa Harbour, which is in the far north of New Zealand. Uh, it's considered one of the most beautiful, uh, tranquil harbours in this country. Now, today we're going to do green-lipped mussels and show you what we do. Now, because this particular kitchen of mine is right over the sea, before I start any uh, cooking on this deck, I always throw out a, a fishing line. Just in case, even during this filming, we pull in a fish. So we throw the line out and sometimes while something's cooking, I, I sit in my spa over here, have a glass of red wine and have the rod at the same time. Firstly, finely chopped onions, uh, grated cheese, some chopped peeled onions, uh, sorry, tomatoes, and of course, green lipped mussels which New Zealand is quite famous for. Now you'll notice that the size of these mussels is about three times the size of uh, the mussels in Europe. And that's one of the reasons why the way you cook them is a little bit different than the way you do typically in the European recipe. Now firstly, the reason that I'm doing this recipe is that most people, not everyone, but most people make a basic mistake right from the beginning you will know that mussels go into a pot and they're steamed open. But a lot of people put water in first. Now that's where you've made your first mistake. You don't put water in the pot that you're going to steam mussels, and you'll see why. Uh, particularly water out of the tap, which may have chloride, fluoride, or whatever it may have in it. But really you don't use water in the pot because it waters down the natural ingredients uh, of the mussel, which is used uh, shortly in the puree that we're going to do. So I'll just show you. We're, in this case we're going to use a barbecue, but it could of course be on a stove. It doesn't have to be on a barbecue, but, but because we're up here on our deck, we're using our barbecue. Okay, so the first stage then is, is quite vital. To come in close to that pot, there's no water, no liquid, nothing in the pot. These mussels have come out of a typical uh, food, food store and they've been, I've been watering them for days, you know, in the, as they keep them in their food store fresh. So there's no need to actually uh, wash these mussels, but if you've got them off the seabed, then you'd need to wash any sand off them before you put them in the pot. But in this case, it's not necessary. And put the lid on the top. In the meantime, while that's steaming, I'm going to prepare the puree. Now to do that, I've got these chopped, peeled tomatoes them in the pan. I'm going to put some onions with that and I'm going to add some mixed herbs. Now it can be any herbs you like. In my case I love the Italian herbs as you know. Typically in the in the European recipes they put the actual uh, mussels inside there and cook it that way. But these mussels are much bigger and uh, it's better, as you will see, to do them separately. And what will happen is the liquid will come out of the muscle and we will then pour that into this, this puree to give that extra special taste to it. Well, we've been six minutes now steaming the mussels. So we take the lid off and you'll notice that the mussels have opened. Now if they don't open, then you don't eat them. That's just the rule. Usually though, the ones that don't open are edible, but it's safer not to, not to um, eat them if they don't open. And that's why you don't need water. That is the juice of the mussel, which is absolutely wonderful. It's salty, and that's why with my recipe I don't add salt. There's salt in there. Uh, now what you also do, I think it's wise, is that you will sieve it. As you put it into your puree here, you just sieve it. You'll notice too how much moisture now has gone into the puree. Uh, and that will simmer away there for a while. But you'll notice when the mussel, there's a little furry, see the fur in there? You pull that out and it's got a little tongue attached. You don't need to have that, it's a little bit tough to eat. So that's uh, something else with the New Zealand green mussel. It's so big, it has its own beard. <laughs> So you pull that out uh, and then you'll find it's much easier to eat and much nicer to eat. Now there's a beard that's a little bit larger. 
And that one, when you pull it out, uh, again makes it much more edible and much nicer. Now, all in all, I've just did uh, 14 mussels today, but you buy the number of mussels that you want. If it's just for one person or two people, uh, 14 mussels will be enough for three people. So we'll take that puree here, we pour that And, be, and you will find that tomato has softened the saltiness. Just put some cheese on top. Just give that extra character. Looks fantastic. And for those that, uh, that like parsley, well then, why not? And this lettuce, pok choy, and this Chinese lettuce here is all growing on my deck here. And it's indeed so is the parsley. You put that on and uh, it is really uh, quite an exotic dish that you have a glass of white wine and just enjoy your day. Green lipped mussels from New Zealand not using water in the pot but capturing the natural juice. Uh, and one of the reasons too that you, you look inside it before you put it on the table is that occasionally there will be a small little crab inside the mussel. Now they're actually quite edible, but most people don't like eating the little crab, so you would take them out for your guests anyway. Mm. Incredible. And my word, my cameraman is so taken with the lovely, delicious smell and look of this plate, he wanted to eat it before I did. So here's my son, grandson, Noah.